Hey. How you doing? Well, I've been better. Yeah, you look you look like you've been through the ringer this week. Well, I don't care how many protein shakes you can drink. You're not getting the calories. I've lost about eight pounds. Yeah, I can see it in your face. So, and then there's no energy. So yeah. they took a huge chunk of my, my gum. Wow. All my teeth are loose. I'm hoping it tightens back up again. Wow. I guess I had a bad infection, so. Wow. Well, uh, I guess... What do you do? Well, just just power through it. I might not be here tomorrow. Lee has some, there's some sort of big Eugene Symphony benefit that Lee has to sell her pots at. So okay. none of her friends are helping. So I have to go help her set up the tent in the morning. So if I can get back in time, I'll be here. Okay. Well, if you can't get back, not, not worry about it. Right? I get to... I get to start soft food tomorrow. Oh boy, well that'll be an improvement. Gerber baby food, huh? Uh, I, I actually cheated last night, I had mashed potatoes and cottage cheese. Oh. So all this J-Rob protein stuff, Malcolm brings back those terrible memories of our middle-aged middle. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So Susan, you know uh, Kevin had this uh, oral surgery on his on his gums there. So, yeah. Susan, how, Susan can't hear you. We can't hear you. There I am. Okay, now I'm there. Uh, yeah, I don't have a computer today, so I'm using my phone, which may not work as far as you're being able to see what I'm doing. But at yeah. least I can be here and see okay. what happens all right well we'll just we'll just go with that then and there's ram cool so are you at home or somewhere you must be somewhere else huh me yeah but you don't have your computer no my computer is getting a new uh battery put in oh okay it's at the computer store the computer store yep so how much detail do you go into about the bubbling well? Because a lot of stuff I'm reading is talking about how you got to do all this toe gripping and everything. Um, which is hard to do when you've got shoes on. Um, yeah, it's called, it's called tiger paws. All right? you, you practice tiger paws. You know, you know how cats, I guess tigers do it too, but you know how cats do that kind of kneading action, right? Which, which actually goes back to being kittens and what they're doing is needing the mammary glands of their mother to, to produce more milk. Uh, so it, it's kind of like that. You're supposed to be doing that on the earth. Well, that's interesting that you brought that up, Kevin, because that has been kind of the subject of the last uh, two classes. Um, it's, it's a very, very important um, thing. Uh, in fact, I, I'm gonna, I'm going to repeat a story that Annie told us. Actually, let me see whether I can get her in here to tell you this story um, about her own practice, because it might mean something to you guys' practice. Let me see if she's available. Okay, so Annie's going to come in here and tell you this, this little story. And um, the reason I want her to repeat this is there, there's two or three reasons. 
Uh, one is the, the principles that she's talking about that touch on Kevin's question, they touch on the same thing. It's really, really important. And that seems to be the, the theme of the day. So we're going to do that. The second reason is what Master Zhang used to say, that you will learn as much from your classmates as you ever will from your teacher. And this is a perfect example. What the story Annie is going to tell you is, in one way, very individual to her. But in another way, it's universal. Everybody who works in Qigong or Tai Chi seriously will come across something like this in their, uh, in their practice. It's a milestone in practice. So let me just have Annie tell you the story. Um, uh, historically, because he put so much emphasis on the center, this, the Don Chen, um, I work with it all the time, like we do. Uh, and because I'm, a, uh, I use language to think, but I also use imagery uh, in my uh, mind's eye. Uh, it's one of the ways that I work on things. Um, so uh, I was sitting on the back porch in the sun recently, meditating on the Don Chen. And I saw it in my mind's eye. And I saw it as a floating golden sphere. And it was just hovering there in space and I was just working on it and spinning it and rotating it and just being with it um, and connecting that symbol uh, to my physical body. And all of a sudden, I just had this awareness that the image that I was holding was, while it was correct, it was incomplete. The Don Chen is not just a sphere floating in space. It is connected to two other spheres, which are at my feet. And when I realized that my imagery was limiting my experience of my body, my Don Chen, I mean all the Don Chens and the body, it was transformative. It was like um, uh, the other Don Chens turned on. The ones in my feet turned on. Um, and the symbol in my uh, uh, mind's eye changed to three balls, the Don Chen, and then two balls at my feet. Um, and my experience of being in my body changed. And then later in the day, I was doing some yard work, moving a pile of dirt from one place to another place in my wheelbarrow. So the wheelbarrow was really loaded. I'd had this experience of, of boom, boom, being lit up, I grabbed the wheelbarrow and I started moving it and I realized I was experiencing my body in a different way. Uh, I was experiencing another Don Chen outside of my body in the wheel of the wheelbarrow. So I was lit up in ways that I had never experienced it before. My feet were really grounded. My Don Chen was alive and spinning and active, and yet I was also in relationship with another energetic field, which was the wheel of the wheelbarrow. Yeah, you were doing push hands with a wheelbarrow. Yeah, I was doing push hands <laughs> with a wheelbarrow. Oh, so I mean, I'm absolutely serious. Yes, that's what's no, about, that's it's what, what it, it feel like. That's what it felt like. And uh, so, on one hand, I felt like, yes, that I had made this big step in my practice because now my practice is different. 
Yeah. It's subtle, but it's real and and it's really important. And it's important. Yes. So even doing Qigong this morning, working with the stick, I think because there's weight out in front of me, I could replicate that feeling yes. of being in relationship with the wheelbarrow exactly. in a different way. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, well, you know, think about this. Um, you had life before this breakthrough, <laughs> this milestone, yeah. and now there's going to be life afterward. You can build things on that insight that you had. Yeah. Without that insight, there's no ground to build on. Yeah, and of course, he had said these things to me for almost 15 years. <laughs> over and over and over again. Um, but that's the way it goes. It, but it, it was it, it, when I realized that my limit, <laughs> I was limiting myself by having a particular... It's image. not that your image was wrong. It was incomplete. It, it was, was incomplete. incomplete. And because I experienced the world so strongly through my symbolics, through the symbols uh, in my imagination, uh, it really changed the way that I'm in the world now. I told you guys the story of my own uh, kind of milestone moment working with Master Zhang, and I had exactly the same feeling afterward. He's told me this a hundred times. Yeah. Why Why did I not understand it? It's because I wasn't ready. Yeah. You're ready when you're ready. There's, there's nothing right or wrong about it. It's just the way it is. And the, the master you're working with has to just keep repeating it. Some people maybe will get it the first time, but that's about one in a billion. And, and to tell you the truth, even if it happens really fast, it's almost more by accident than anything else. Yeah. Or, or they come into the practice already having done a lot of other very yeah. similar practices. So, uh, you know, it doesn't matter when you get it. The only thing that matters is that it, that it happens. Now, I have one, one question I meant to ask you earlier and forgot, so I'm going to uh, ask it now. You mentioned before in the earlier classes that not only did the, in your imagery did the Don Chen light up, and uh, uh, Kevin, this is what you're asking about the Yun Shuan, the bubbling wells at the bottom of the feet lit up, but your Ming Mun kind of lit up too. Well, I yes, it it did. It what I realized was that I'd been. It, holding the Don Xian as a separate thing, sort of, uh, yeah, more in the front of my body, oh, and then I realized that is incomplete. Yeah, and that was really apparent this morning when we were doing the stick routine. It's like, oh, it's this is my Ming, this is my Don Xian too. The Ming Mun would lit lit up and became much more active. Uh, yes. As a result. And so now I just feel, I don't know how to explain it. The dungeon is not out here as a floating uh, sphere anymore. The dungeon is here. Here, yes. Here. Yes. And those are he on the, in my feet, in the, in, especially in the in, insole, the inside of my feet. Okay. Uh, that's where it feels the most active. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, uh, I'm not saying it should be on the insoles. It's just that's where good, I that, am now. good that you're aware of it. Yeah. Um, so I would say, uh, first of all, congratulations. Oh. You've gotten your Don Chan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> My God, as you said, it's 15 years. Yeah. That's exactly what it takes. That's what it takes. You remember the guy who called me years ago and said, uh, he called me on the phone and said, so, so you teach Tai Chi, I teach Tai Chi. He said, well, I'm thinking about teaching Tai Chi, but I want to know how long does it take to become a master? And I said, well, if you hadn't asked, it would have taken you maybe 20 years. But now that you've asked, it's going to take you 40 years. It's going to take you 99 lifetimes. <laughs> or maybe 99 lifetimes. Yeah, you know, I knew he was never going to do any Tai Chi. Um, so my question is, the, the, the Ming Mun, first of all, I really like your, your metaphors for becoming, a, a, when you become aware of what you're calling Dan Chans. 
So in, in some Taoist theories, there are 144 Danqians in the body. The Danqian is the one right under your navel, right? So we just, when you say Danqian, that's what you mean. But in fact, each of the chakras is a Danqian, and each of the major acupuncture They're points. They're energy centers. They're energy centers. Yeah. So the yin chuan and the bottom of the feet are obviously really critical because mm -hmm. from the right foot to the danqian to the left foot, that's an arch. It's a natural catenary arch. And that's what, that's what your spine rests on, right? And that's what powers you. So here's my question. If I remember your earlier story right, uh, I think you were associating consciousness of the of the uh, Ming Mun with using the wheelbarrow. Is, yes. is that correct? Yes, yes. All right. Why did that happen? There's a really important reason th that you can take into your... I'm gonna, no, let her answer. All right. Why would using the wheelbarrow activate the Ming Mun? Uh, because I could, I could feel a power source yeah. or a power, I yeah. could, I could feel myself as a tripod. Yeah. More. Why would be using, the, I mean, it wouldn't have to be the wheelbarrow, it could be anything, but yeah. why, why would doing this out here activate that back there? I don't know, unless it had something to do with the activation of the one outside. And well, in a, in a, yeah, in a, in a, in a, yes, yes. That my consciousness, my awareness of the power source of outside of myself somehow activated this. And it had to do with, I mean, I don't really know the no, answer to no, that Well, question. no, I think that's a very legitimate answer. Well, I'm looking for, uh, that's a very sophisticated answer. I'm looking for a simpler one. But the sophisticated answer that she's giving here is absolutely true. So she was doing the wheelbarrow. It's got an axle and a wheel out there. And if you pay attention to that and relate it into your body the same way you do when you're doing push hands with someone, yeah. right? That's out there, which means it's going to activate something back here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the simpler answer I was looking for, uh, you know, you could just, you could do it with a stick. If, if I'm going out like this, oh, that's going to activate my, yeah. you know, because yeah. anytime you go out, something's, something's got to go back yeah. and activate that. And um, on the other hand, when you draw in, right, now what gets activated is in front. Because yeah. I'm drawing, I'm actually drawing my hands back, and now I'm pushing out back, front, back, front. Back, front, and that's what you were experiencing. Layered on top of that was the Danchen awareness, which is even more sophisticated. So, no, I, your answer was a good answer. So, yeah, Kevin. It was when I picked, well, I remember feeling, okay, picking that up because I had, because I'd had that experience, when I went to get the wheelbarrow, I remembered your lesson in the studio when you had us play, play with the, the wheelbarrow. wheelbarrow and so when I picked it up I had just come off of that experience when I picked it up immediately this part and that and you could feel I, it I could feel it yes and at the same time when I picked when I picked it up it activated this but when I started to move forward, forward it activated, it that. activated that did you feel more powerful Oh, absolutely. It felt yeah. like an Amazon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It felt yeah. really powerful. So, uh, we were, in the earlier classes, we were saying, well, <laughs> I don't know, I think Annie actually said it, it's not that big a deal. Well, in one way, you're right. It's, it's a little thing that happens in practice, but on the other hand, it's not a little thing. It's a really big thing. To become aware of your Don Chen in that really primary, primal way. And to have your feet activated. Yes. I mean, my hands have been activated for a long time. Yeah. I've not yes. had it for, 
I came into this practice with activated hands from the work that I had done in other modalities. But to activate my feet. And I think that my time in the garden and my time in the sun this spring really, really helped do this and contributed to this. Um, uh, I, I uh, mentioned earlier that um, I watched a video the other day, a short video, by a woman who is a healer, uh, a, a very chic black woman from Haiti who's uh, natural, and I would probably guess in the voodoo tradition. And um, but her she, grandmother, her mother and her grandmother. Well, her but she, but yeah, she probably was, but she was real 21st century yeah. and um, was, you know, really dressed beautifully. And uh, she was saying, all the work that I do is about the immune system. And she said, there are three problems in modern life that are causing us trouble. And the one that really stood out for me was we live lives where we are not out in the sun. And it's really important for our brains and our nervous system and our body to be exposed to the sun. Yeah, and uh, I think that hit me because of Annie's story the other day. Tell them, you might as well tell them that story oh, too. Well, it's really I was short story. Amending, some, amending a, a, a bed out in the back. And, I had uh, arranged myself so that the sun was hitting the back of my head and I'm just really enjoying myself and the birds are singing and I'm just really grateful to be here and to have this little plot of earth uh, to, to dig around in and I was sitting on my little stool and just peaceful and all of a sudden the sun hitting my these two parts of my brain lit up. It was just boom. I could feel them just boom come online. And of course, I stopped and I'm shocked. First of all, why are they where are they off? And why <laughs> and why are they turning on? And what have I been missing? I have not had access to an outdoor space since 1990. Yeah except for Golden Gate Park. Yeah. I know that sounds awful, folks, that but That is true. detrimental to one's health. That's what I have learned. You know, um, I'll, I'll tell one more uh, family son story, and, and then I want to, for us to do a little practice. Years ago, Annie's daughter, Lisa, was mountain biking somewhere down in the, uh, the mountains around San Diego. And uh, she was coming down a very, very rough, rocky trail. And she hit a bad patch, some boulders. And to get out of, she thought she was going to go down. She jumped off the bike. She dismounted. Unfortunately, one of her legs hit the boulder the wrong way. And she broke her leg in five places. A very, very bad break. A spiral. Yeah, it was very, very, very bad. And the kind of thing where you could be, you know, affected the rest of your life. Fortunately, she ended up with a surgeon who was, I believe, the surgeon for, for the, the San Diego team. Chargers. Yeah. And, you know, he put... Um, uh, titanium plates in and screws and you know all this stuff they put it all back together and uh, eventually she ends up at home and weeks and weeks and weeks go by and she's not healing very well I'm not I'm not talking about the places where the skin was split I'm talking about the bone the bone was not healing well and uh, I forget how long she went, but she went back in. She went in. about six, uh, six weeks, and then uh, for an exam, and they're saying, you know, yeah. This yeah. Is so not... six weeks in, the, they give her an exam. Wow, the bone's really not healing very well. And I think she came up with this idea herself. She did it herself. herself. She did. She, did. she, she had when a she trampoline when she got home, room. she had a big, uh, a big, you know, twelve foot trampoline, round trampoline in the backyard. She took her clothes off and um, laid on that trampoline with her leg naked to the sun. 
And she did that, I think, for a Every couple day, of weeks. Yeah, yeah. And, and the next time she, the went, next time in, she went in, they went, wow, I, what, what happened? happened? Uh, this is amazing. Your, your bones are really knitting up well. Yeah. Well, you can Google, sunlight will penetrate your body. And the healing process, particularly for things like bones, uh, is is um, greatly helped by exposure to sunlight. Well, it makes sense. We are an evolutionary product of the earth and the sun. Yeah, but when they we took both of them. <laughs> when we moved to San Francisco, we, we were out of the sun for, right. for thirty years. We were in concrete. We were and we were uh, in offices and studios. Well, I was out you a lot better. more than you were, just because I was out, I was outside for Tai Chi, but. Anyway. But now we're locked in we're locked in we're locked in a little room. Yes, but we've got right a in. little postage That's right. stamp. We've got a little postage stamp backyard with a garden in it. Okay guys, here's the here's the uh, exercise that I want to do. This is this is from move number six. And let me demonstrate this. And this has to do exactly with what Kevin was asking. Activating your yin shuan. The yin shuan in the, in the palm of the hand, there's a, a, an acupuncture point. Not, not quite in the middle here, but up just a little bit to this side, right? Not quite in the middle, but up just a little bit. Uh, this is called the Lao Gong, the inner Lao Gong. And then there's an outer Lao Gong here. The same thing is true in your foot. You've got a major acupuncture point in your foot called the yin shuan, which means the bubbling well. What that means is they're like two artesian springs and they're bubbling yin chi from the earth. Heaven is yang, earth is yin, right? This is where the yin chi comes into the body. As Annie's story just indicated, it, it's always happening. But if you become conscious of it, it active, the, your, your consciousness activates those points and you can feel it. When you sink in Tai Chi, when you song, when you relax and sink, what you're doing is sinking down into those yin shuan and feeling the earth under your feet. This is the reason that Tai Chi forms are done slowly. But nobody wants to do them slowly. Everybody wants to just rush ahead. This is the, this is the uh, American way of doing things. Rush, 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 rush. So you have to develop... Uh, it, it's not so much a matter of patience. It's a matter of perception. When you move... You're always moving from stillness. Stillness is when you touch your Dan Chan and the bottom of your feet. So let's do this little move out of just the first part of White Crane. All right, sink to the left, the Yun Shuan, the bottom of the foot on the left. And the right sink. And the left sink. And the right sink. And the left sink. And the right sink. And the left sink. And the right sink. Okay, could you see me sink at each of those points? If you don't do that, it's not Tai Chi. <laughs> <laughs> tai Chi is about yin and yang. Right? This, that's yang. But you have to sink into yin before you manifest the yang. There's no other way to do it. You have to sink into the ground 
and then push off the ground. Boom! All right? That's where your power comes from. But what are your toes doing in all this? Well, mine are in my shoes, so my, my toes are screaming. <laughs> now let me out! All right? Um, your, uh, it, it, Kevin, is just very, very natural. In, in a, you, you, can, you can practice it in the sense of becoming aware of it and then, and then practicing what you're already doing, so to speak. But you think about, uh, if I'm just sinking into this foot, the toes are just relaxing. They're relaxing and opening. Right? And then when you pump like this, they're, they're going to squeeze a little bit. They're going to squeeze into the ground a little bit. Right. And it's that relaxing and squeezing is what you're talking about. Yeah, because because if I'm doing that uh, sort of thing, and I, I the brief milliseconds I can actually align everything up and stand straight and be centered, not tai chi, but standing up. If I move my toes, I can change my whole body alignment. Is that sort of what we're talking about here a little bit? Well, I would I would have to see what you're actually doing, but it sounds it sounds legitimate. Uh, just remember, it's very simple. It's not like there's you know some some secret toe thing that you're doing. <laughs> it's it, but it's just what we naturally do anyway. Now, once you become aware of it, then then you can practice it a little bit. But um, as with everything else. To me, Tai Chi is about hitting, hitting harmony, hitting moderation. It's not about extremes, all right? So this is correct. This is too much. This is too much. Right? But you know, you're, you're, you're constantly, basically, Kevin, it's very simple. You're just flexing your foot. You know, if, if you, if you sink into the foot, watch my hands. If you sink into the foot, the hands are, the, the bottom of the feet are going to straighten out. And then when you come up again, they're going to, they're going to flex up a little bit, right? Okay, guys, let's try, let's try two exercises. Stand in a high horse stance, right? Make sure that, you, that you've got a nice round thing here. And now, all right, all the way down to the bottom of the foot on the right side. Feel your chi go down. Let it go down until you can feel it under your foot. And now let, let yourself sort of bounce up from there. And now on the left side, all the way down to the bottom of the foot. Boom. And again. Boom. And again. Boom. 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 In other words, it takes a moment. You have to be patient. Now, what we were doing, you could say, is a Tai Chi exercise. It's also Qigong. This is one of the major reasons Master Funk suggested that for every three hours of Tai Chi you did, you did seven hours of Qigong. Slow down. Pay attention to your chi. Let it go down, 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 down. Pop. Now you bounce back up. All right? It's like a ball bouncing off the floor. It's just much slower. Eventually, once you really get that, of course you can speed it up. The problem is everybody wants to speed up, so they, they just... They just, they just fly over it without, without feeling it. And without feeling it, you don't activate it. And without activating it, you can't really cultivate it. Now, if you go back to that 
the movement in the, in the sixth form, right? So, Don bien, right? sink into the left foot, sink all the way down, pop, and then you bounce back up, and now the right foot, and then now the left foot again, and the right foot, and the left foot, and the right foot, and the left foot, and the right foot. Boom. That's such a simple little exercise. I just picked that because that's what we were working on earlier, and it's it's a it's a it's a good little place to do this exercise because there's no footwork, right? It's it's just sliding your weight back and forth. Sink. 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 Um, back in the day when we were practicing with Master Zhang, he would. Um, stand on the side, we'd be doing a form, and you'd hear him going, Song! Song! Mi song! Mi song! You, you, relax! Relax, relax! Song literally means relax, but it's a code, it's a Tai Chi code. What it really means is sink. Sink. All the way. If you just do this, without sinking all the way. It will never work as a martial application, and it won't work for health for your health either, or at least it won't work as well. The whole point about sinking is it's moving your mind, and therefore your chi, through your body, all the way down to the bottom of the foot and even into the ground. Like, like, there are, like there are tree roots growing out of the bottom of your feet <laughs> into the ground. All right, let's try one more. To the left, sink. To the right, sink. 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 Now, the truth is, you could go through the whole form like that, do exactly the same thing. And you should. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you should do the form. The very first move. Sink. 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 Sink on this side. Sink. Sink. So just be aware of that. That's that's what will activate your energy body. And it will make your Tai Chi very smooth and very, very graceful looking. Because you're, you're constantly going between touching on, in essence, touching on solid ground. And then 
moving into motion. Touch on the solid, move into motion. Touch on stillness, move into motion. Touch on stillness, move into motion. It's just a very simple primal uh, kind of uh, direction or, or primal rhythm. The stillness in stillness is not the real stillness. <laughs> Only when there's stillness in motion will the spiritual rhythm appear which pervades heaven and earth. Will the spiritual rhythm Tai Chi is a practice in the spiritual rhythm. The stillness and stillness is not the real stillness. Only when there's stillness in motion. There's stillness in motion. Um, you guys know the, uh, the Buddhist mantra... Uh, Om, right? O-M. Mm -hmm. A-U-M, right? It's usually spelled O-M nowadays. Um, that is the primal mon universal mantra. Um, according to those who practice it, it's not something that human beings made up. It's something we discovered out there in the world. The same way we discovered Antarctica. It exists objectively. It's a sound, but what it's the sound of is silence. The sound of silence. Those of us who go back to the 60s will remember that song, right? although their take on it was a little different. But it's, it's the, that silence itself has a sound. And here's the thing. Why did they do the mantra? They do the mantra to activate it, to activate themselves. And what they say is, the sound is always there. Me doing the mantra is not creating the sound. What, it, what that's doing is unlocking my ability to hear it. That sound of silence is all around us all the time. But we don't hear it. The fish in the aquarium does not see the water. We don't hear this sound. That sound of silence is the same thing as stillness in Tai Chi. <laughs> You're touching on that primal dimension of existence that pre-exists all motion. So Tai Chi is a, if, if, if this were a, uh, a, 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 a singing or an, or an oral uh, practice, we would be going between silence and sound, silence and sound, silence and sound. Or what every traditional musical tradition does to simulate that is they include in their traditional music a drone. The drone is in the background and the music rests on the drone. The music is motion. The drone is stands in for silence, stands in for stillness. And then you, when you listen to, you know, a, a raga or go listen to um, a traditional Celtic music. There's always a drone in the background, usually pipes. Right? That's, that's the same as the mantra Om. Right? You have the same thing in Tai Chi and Qigong. You need to have that ongoing drone, and then you need to have a moment of silence in between each motion to touch on that drone again. Right? So, right? silence, motion, silence, motion, silence, motion, silence, motion, silence, motion. Right? 
silence, motion, silence, motion, silence. That bringing that silence into your form, that stillness into your form, makes it so beautiful. Think about the best music in the world has a drone or it has moments of silence. Think about uh, great paintings. There's, in, in a truly great painting, there are places that the artist leaves for your eye to rest. Maybe, maybe just a, 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 a gray sky or a far vista. It's, it's a, a little silence. In, in all the drama, there's a little silence. And it's the same in Tai Chi. And the way you get there is just pay attention to what you're doing. All right? And that also, by the way, Kevin, activates your Yun Chuan. Activates this, this arch from side to side. All right? Okay, guys, uh, let's pick it up again tomorrow. Um, somebody said they could not be here tomorrow. Kevin can't be here tomorrow, or maybe. Maybe can't be here tomorrow. Okay, well, we will go ahead uh, tomorrow, right? So see you then. Ciao. Thank you.